Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2016. Brought to you by Informatica. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for Informatica World 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Peter Burris. Our next guest is Abhishek Chowdhury, who's the manager of information systems at Indian Oil Corporation LTD. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So tell us about your business, first of all. I'm fascinated by this. So what is the company? How does it operate? What's the business model? Give us a quick update on that. So John, uh, we're basically a downstream company in, into oil. And uh, we, we actually uh, do a little bit of refine, uh, more of a refining as well. So uh, we operate, uh, we, we sell the products in the Indian markets. We have the largest refining capacity in, in India. We also uh, have greener initiatives now. Uh, we, we're going ahead into those areas as well. We are actually uh, uh, you know, getting into petrochemical businesses as well in India. So we, we are the largest enterprise from oil perspective. What's the relationship in with the government? Is the government regulated? Is it part of um, open? Do you guys set the price and how competitive is it? Can you just quick, uh, quick so uh, overview? So the government has 80% stake in the company. So it's basically a government company. 20% is there with the, uh, you know, with the markets out there. As far as pricing are concerned, uh, we now are uh, living in a deregulated pricing regime. So, yes, I mean the the companies have yeah, technically <laughs> the companies have uh, you know can take their own call on the pricing as well now. So, what's the challenge with data? Obviously, there's a lot of things to look at. Data run the business, IoT, and now wireless is now booming. And I know we have an office in, in India, and growth in tech exploding. Yeah. Uh, how and also there's areas that need. Um, internet access and other uh, forms of, of, of connections. So there's more pressure on energy than ever before. So yeah, how does the data fit into all this? So uh, let me first get into you know, the initiatives that the government is trying to push in here. What happened was that uh, with the new government formation approximately two years back, their focus was uh, more on, on onto IT into you know, the public sector companies in India. And that's where the digital India came in. Now with that initiative, what happened was they wanted to open up a new arena of you know, transparency with the consumers out there. And every bit and pieces of the businesses which touched lives in India, they wanted to open up on uh, uh, open up to them. So you know, and, and then to, to do so, they wanted to use the technology. So we were actually mandated to, you know, uh, do a lot of uh, things here, digitizing a lot of processes that were there. One of the major initiatives that the government pushed was, was in our LPG business, which is basically the liquefied petroleum gas cylinders that are being sold in India. So what happened was that every household in India had an LPG connection. And uh, these bottle gases were actually being sold to them at a dual pricing. So, you know, the market had two prices for the same product, which created a lot of interest in the market. So, uh, they wanted to get away with that first. And that's where they actually introduced a scheme called Pehel. What, what was that called? Pehel. Pehel. Yeah. Hmm. So. What's that? So that's, that's basically, uh, they wanted to bring that product uh, under one price, and the intended subsidy, which is the government subsidy, would go directly into the consumer's bank account, right from our systems to their account. For that, they wanted to use, uh, so the, there was another flagship program for the government, which was called the UIDIA, which is the Aadhaar, or, or let's say a unique identification number which was being given to all the citizens in India. They wanted to use that system for transferring these into the bank accounts, the subsidy into the bank accounts of these consumers. So that's, that's the system that we wanted to bring in and, and we were actually you know, fortunate to bring it as, a, as in probably a three month, three to four months time. 
into this. So I'm fascinated about, uh, I mean, obviously, India is a very, very populous country. Some say it's the most populous country on the planet. Um, and it faces some very interesting, a, a number of very interesting infrastructure and socioeconomic problems. I, uh, a different uh, group of individuals once told me that every day 100 million people are migrating into and out of Delhi and Mumbai every single day, yeah, which is right. just mind-boggling to me. It's the entire population of the US, western U.S., west of the Mississippi, descending upon L.A. and then leaving at the end of the day. Um, are, is your business also thinking about how to optimize energy consumption across that entire group? What role does petrochemicals, the, pet, uh, the, the oil business play in thinking about the entire needs of a population that's that diverse and that large and with those kinds of needs? So Peter, what, what we actually, yes, I mean, that, that's one of the biggest challenges that we face when, when it comes to IET in, in the company. Because, you know, you have people moving from one place to the other, you know, the, the, the identification numbers of these actually change from one place to the other. There's a, there, there are business processes which are stale for long, never being reviewed. So what essentially happened was that, you know, these consumers had to wait uh, for a longer time to get basic commodity services that, that, that was required. We wanted to change that and uh, for that what we're doing is we, we're actually bringing in everything into one umbrella. So that's, that's hmm. where we're actually trying to implement a CRM system as well. So you have one identification across the company, you move from one place to the other, you, you get self-serviced um, through these uh, self-service portals that we have now. You want to get LPG connection at a different place. You just need to call, give a call. Nothing changes for you. you, you we have an online KYC being done, so uh, they can actually go online, fill up the KYC, and the next day you get a connection. So you don't even. We, we're actually trying to move to a regime where you know you don't even have to visit the distributorship to get a connection now anymore. So India is a net importer of oil. In fact, I don't think you guys produce much oil, do you? No, no, we yeah, don't. Yeah. So you're a net importer of oil. Uh, we were talking earlier with Jerry Held. Jerry Held is uh, one of the luminaries in the database marketplace. Been uh, a real friend of the Cube and has come on multiple times to talk about some of the challenges in data management and some of the trends in database management, et cetera. Uh, and we talked about how data is bound to time, that we can look at systems that tell us something about the past and systems that tell us something about the future, but also a lot of the technologies that we're focused on are systems that tell us something about right now, things that are doing something in real time. You have to marry together, the reality is, as India, not being an oil producing nation, has to buy at an optimum price, has to know how much to buy at that yeah. optimum price. So the future is crucially important to you, even as you're making decisions about how to allocate that limited supply that is bought on a daily basis across the entire company, or across your entire country. Tell us about the role that big data is playing as you think about what to buy and how to, uh, how to uh, distribute it across, okay. a, again, something like a country so like India. So what we've done is we've actually, uh, you know, divided this into different product lines for us, right? So one, one of the product lines is an LPG which gets imported into India. The other is the crude which gets imported. Now, essentially, with the crude which gets refined is actually, you know, the petrol and the diesel which actually goes into the market. Mm -hmm. There are certain special, special products which come out of that uh, column, but then, you know, the chunk of the volume which comes out is, is basically the petrol and the diesel. So what we did was, since LPG was more an organized sector for us, you know, in India, we actually base we converted our systems into a real-time consumption pattern. So we actually know sitting here today how much is the LPG consumption that has happened till yesterday night. Or, 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 you know, for that matter, our real-time analytics would tell you, you know, till now what, what is the pattern that, that's there. And uh, over a period of time, we, we, we've collected this data as well so that the forecast happens accordingly. So LPG is pretty much set. But then when, we, when we're talking about petrol and diesel, there was never a mindset within India 
to capture the secondary sales that was mm. happening out of these gas stations in India. That's pretty much now changing. Now, you know, we've already taken up a lot of projects, bigger projects on this, where we're actually capturing now or are trying to capture the secondary sales that's happening out of these gas stations. So that's where we are actually working on the IoT space where, you know, once uh, a, a person comes here, unlike in the in the US, right? So uh, these gas stations are actually, again, manned gas stations. They're not self-service gas stations. So what happens is that, you know, um, again, there's a lot of interest out there. So. Uh, we need we need to have control systems which which do that. So one of the things that we are actually doing on this space is that we are actually uh, capturing the data on a real time basis direct from these devices, the, the dispensing un, uh, units that are placed, and it comes to a central site over here. We do a, a real time analytics on, on on that particular data. We also have business processes which which control this. So we put in uh, controls as well on these streams of data that are flowing in. And then based on, you know, uh, or, or, or let's say the business decisions based on those data, again, the acknowledgement flows back to these devices. So that, that's how something which we are working on. Uh, we've already, there are three phases in which we've started this. One was the... Uh, the sourcing of the, the data of, of, from these devices. We already have an automation system which is running. We wanted to source this data on a real-time basis. We've done that. That's live in production for us. The second is we've included this into the future RFPs as well. And the third thing which we are actually parallelly working with Informatica through a project called Stratus is we are trying to build in a, a uniform platform where, uh, you know, it's just more of a plug and play, where you actually install a site and day one, it's under that system. So that's something which is, uh, you know, which is really cool for us. So you guys are, ch are changing potentially the future of retail for the consumer experience in India with this idea. Yes, John, I mean, believe me, uh, by the time we actually, uh, you know, we would be finishing off, or let's say, you know, these systems come into a maintenance mode, we would be actually changing the way retail businesses is being done in India, at least for the oil industry. What we are saying is that we would, over a period of time, we would be coming out with our own wallets. We would be uh, integrating the system with the loyalty programs out there. So, you know, every penny that you actually spend on our gas stations, would you would not only earn points out of it, but you can actually burn those points into into other product so you lines. You take of the an old store. line, kind of, you know, the L the um, the uh, LPG, and then the petrol and refinery stuff, which is complicated. Modernize it with the analytics, the streaming and the real time processing of Informatica, and essentially created some ability to get all that data in. Yeah. And so I got my notes here. I was making a note here. You guys have done the largest cash benefit program recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records yeah, with a direct benefit transfer affecting over 125 million households. Correct, that's correct. That is pretty massive. Congratulations. Thank you. What does that mean? Like, is it like, what's involved? How complicated is it? Get, paint the picture. We only have two, three minutes. <laughs> okay, I mean, so it's complicated. First of all, the scale of 120 million is pretty significant. Yeah, but the data I mean, enabled that, right? You integrated it in. Yeah, so what we are basically doing is that uh, you know, primarily on the LPG business, right? So we're getting these data on a real-time basis. And then we've put in systems or business processes which actually decide whether the subsidy needs to get transferred to these consumers or not. What happens, the, the settlement that goes has to happen in T plus one time. So it goes into the bank, the settlement happens for the subsidy. Uh, for across all these uh, riffle bookings that happen in India. Yeah. So the sheer magnitude in which we operate makes it so large that till okay. today, we've actually transferred more than $20 billion into the Indian banking industry that was not you there. You make a mistake, you lose a billion dollars. Where'd that go? I mean, well, it's I mean, a, it's you make a currency. <laughs> I mean, if you make a small mistake, the magnification of the consequences are pretty significant, so you got to be 
really yes, careful. Uh, yes, very, very. I mean, they the put in monitoring uh, systems there. Uh, we have a dedicated team which uh, looks into issues that come up. We have a dedicated call center which looks into you know consumer complaints and stuff like that. Uh, we also have a lot of auditing agencies which is sitting on 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 these systems you know so uh, what they do is they, they regularly keep checking what, whether it's according to the government policies or not uh, uh, is there uh, uh, you know benefits coming out of this or we need to tweak mm -hmm. the uh, scheme a little so that you know it benefits the government as well one of the things that just came in was was that you know they're trying to link it with your tax payments now so if you really actually, take all your money, yeah, hopefully so, they give it back. <laughs> yeah. So subsidy is never intended, John, for yeah. you know, for, for for the rich. It's yeah. basically intended for the poor in, in in our country. So what now they are doing is earlier also efficiency for that matter for that point yes. is very important and yes. transparency. Yes. So, so so for transparency, we've actually opened up a lo entire all of these systems are open in the. In, in, in the public domain now. So you, some, somebody who wants to know can log in and see whatever is happening for his account. Earlier that was not the case. It, so you it guys have done the work. Okay, you guys done a lot of hard work and some of the things are popping for you on the benefit side. Foundation set. How far um, are, along are you on the IoT? Because you mentioned you got some IoT now. But yeah. give us a taste of how far in is it, and what possibilities are still out there for you guys to, to build on top of the foundation? So John, what we are doing is we are trying to, right now what we are trying to do is we are trying to source the secondary sales coming out of these DUs, right? So once we achieve this, we would be actually putting these data into the big data space that, that we would like to create. So you know, what happens with me is that then, because this data which comes out of these uh, gas stations would be humongous. Once we have this, we would actually have almost, you know, since we control almost 70% of the Indian market, we actually know what is the consumption that India is having on a real-time basis. And yeah. that's, that's pretty much huge data. That's huge data. And you could turn that into benefit too for society. Yes, yes. So it actually has a chain reaction. You can actually plan your imports as well, you can plan your refinery Get some weather activities. data from IBM and you'll be all set, right? I mean, look at the weather. I mean, all <laughs> kinds of new things are going to come yes. out of the woodwork so, out of this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and not only that, John, so what it, it would also trigger a financial, you know, uh, revolution around, around it. So we, we're trying to do as well. So there are a lot of money in India which is, which is not in the financial uh, backbone uh, uh, right now in India, right? So we're trying to put that, bring bring those money out of these systems and, and put it into the mainstream of the banking and system. And with the internet, you have other opportunities for economic revitalization, certainly from all over the country, yeah. opportunities. Yeah, so one, one of the examples that I would give for that econ economic uh, advantages that the government had, wow. uh, you know, of course, I would uh, put it uh, to some extent to, to the crude prices as well, but then uh, a lot of things earlier, government, uh, was was provisioning somewhere around a billion dollar uh, out of their budget for subsidies. This year it is nil. So you've taken the subsidies out and shifted them around. Yeah. So once that's there, that money is yeah. uh, yeah. can people be are accountable. You can't hide anymore. Big data. You can't really hide the subsidies. You got to know where it is. Is it working yes. right? Yes. So you get some efficiencies there. Fascinating case study. I would love to talk further. You have our cars. This is great. Once you sure. kind of peel back the complexity of you know, the oil and how it all works. It's really an amazing data story because you. you get a lot of complicated uh, machinery there moving around, moving parts. Yes, it is actually. But then we're trying our best to you know, <laughs> solve it as simple as it could be. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hold on, hold on tight. Okay, thanks so much, Abstract, for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it. India Oil Company, LTD, here inside theCUBE, sharing their big data efficiency and really changing hundreds of millions of households in India. Great use of big data, and just the beginning, IoT right on the corner. Appreciate your insights Thank on you, theCUBE here. Appreciate it. You're watching theCUBE live in San Francisco. We'll be right back with more after this short break.